Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm here to show you my unboxing and review of the G1WH uh, car camera. Now the interesting thing about this is I originally had, if you, any of you watched my other videos, I did an unboxing and review of the G1W. Now the reason I did uh, an unboxing now of G1WH is because I sent my G1W back. Uh, the reason I sent it back is I think it had a faulty power adapter. It was, uh, it's a it's a well well not a well known problem, but it's a problem that some people have had. Quite a few people with the um, it turns out to be the uh, the power adapters, the in car power adapters for the cameras. They give off a lot of interference, and uh, what that means is uh, that the uh, the cable that comes out of the in-car adapter to plug into the camera to power it acts like a big antenna and it uh, just fires off lots of uh, um, interference, lots of radio interference and what it means is you find it difficult to get uh, any kind of ra uh, signal uh, for radio in the car. So the interesting thing uh, about that is when I asked to exchange it for a new power adapter the uh, the guy who I sent it back to which I bought it from China, so it's taken a long time to send it back. Um, he said to me, uh, I'd have to send the whole thing back, uh, which is fine. Uh, but I said, if I'm sending the whole thing back, can I swap it for a G1WH? Um, because the camera that I bought, I originally bought with a memory card. Um, and I said, if I send you it back with the memory card, can I exchange it for the G1WH without the memory card? Because it's the same price. And he said, yes. So this is what he sent me. I've checked and it is a G1WH. He sent me the G1WH and it's here. So let's have a look. So first of all, let's take off the package. And I have opened it previously just to check that it was the right camera because um, you know what it's like. Could have been wrong, couldn't it? Okay, let's put that to one side. So it's in the same box. You'll probably notice there's a few things to notice. It's actually in the same box as the G1W. Um, and... Uh, but it isn't, it's the G1WH and it quotes all the same specs as the G1W so um, for people who are saying should I get the G1W or the G1WH or people who are saying things like oh I've missed out because I bought the G1W instead of the G1WH uh, you haven't really missed out, it's just a slight redesign so there's no real differences and we'll go over that in the camera in fact the manual that you get with this is exactly the same and we'll show that in a second so yeah the box is exactly the same, the blue box camera there's a lot of people who are going on um, buying the one that I get with the uh, the box but this one uh, actually says GPS on it funnily enough if you can see that uh, I don't think this has GPS but I think you can buy like an add-on adapter for it to turn it into a GPS camera um, but it does have everything else on here it has the wide viewing angle which is something that the um, uh, the G1W didn't have um, although it does give a little bit of that fisheye effect of you know like everything curves round at the edges a little bit so um, yeah uh, but apart from that it's very good yeah it's got everything else on here apart from I would say um, it's got motion detection but the GPS is something it doesn't have so I don't know why that's on there but apart from that the box is exactly the same as you get with the G1W um, so three minutes in let's actually open the box uh, yeah it does have WDR too a wide dynamic range uh, just to point that out so here's the uh, camera itself which is as all these cameras in a very poorly fitted box I think it's a, a catch-all box for loads of different models so the, the actual uh, opening for the camera is actually really really big okay cool so let's just uh, zoom out a little um, here's the camera itself wrapped in the same kind of plastic as the G1W so here's the G1WH it's very nice I feel it's much different to the G1W in that the actual um, <laughs> uh, the actual outside of the case isn't is very understated this time. It's not very flashy or anything, and I think that's quite a good thing for a car camera because well, people are going to see it and it's not so noticeable when they look into your window. Um, particularly, you know, if, if it was brightly coloured, for example, it'd be easy for them to spot. Whereas when it's dark coloured like this, and perhaps you have it behind the rearview mirror or something, it it doesn't look very conspicuous, very obvious, um, so yeah. Um, and that's it, to be honest with you. The only difference really is you, you know from the G1W uh, how it has the outside of the case kind of has this, um, uh, it kind of has this um, metal piece that goes across here, 
uh, and uh, it's it's very noticeable. So this one is actually, in my opinion, it's much better because it's really difficult to see. It's very dark coloured. The only thing that isn't is this thing. I think this is the infrared light, um, but I'm sure you could put a piece of black tape or something over that. Um, so it's uh, it's not so noticeable, because let's be honest, 99% of the people who are buying a car camera aren't going to use that infrared light on there. Because we all know from videos we've seen and other reviews that the only thing it does is reflect off the windscreen onto the lens. So you can't see a thing. So it's kind of pointless having it. But um, anyway, so I suppose if you don't want to, you know, you could just put a piece of black tape over it in case you need to use it again. And, you know, you just take the tape off and if you want to use it. But yeah, I may cover that up with a piece of black tape. Other than that, it's got uh, the button layout is slightly changed from the G1W. It's got the um, uh, the HDMI out in the same place as the G1WH. Uh, uh, G1W, should I say? Uh, the memory card slot is in the same place as the G1W2. Um, it's essentially the same camera in a new case with a different lens, and a lot of people have said that. But there is a few differences, and we'll go over that in a minute when we get the rest of the stuff out of the box, because uh, there's some stuff that comes with it. Okay, so the buttons here, there's a power on. Uh, that's to start recording or take a photo. It also functions as the OK button in the menus. Um, so there's the menu, the mode, and uh, the skip back and forward. Uh, that allows you to flick through the menus. Or if you're in menus, it allows you to fast forward through videos if you're in videos. Uh, the mode button allows you to switch from the camera to the... Um, from the video portion of the camera to the photo portion of the camera. Uh, the menu opens the menus, as you should imagine. Um, and yeah, it's got a screen protector over it that I haven't taken off yet. Because like I said, I have inspected this to make sure it turned on and everything and, and that it was uh, the right camera. But yeah, it is it is the right camera. It's incredibly light, by the way. It's, it's much lighter than the old G1W. I'm not sure why. Um, and yeah, it takes the same type of uh, mount too. So if you have a mount that fits a G1W, uh, it'll fit this too. Um, as you can imagine, it's exactly the same camera, basically, but it's in a different case with a different lens uh, and a few extra features. In, in fact, some of the buttons have been changed around too. So, let's get to that in a minute. Let's put that down and uh, to one side and have a look what else is in here. So you get the uh, HDMI to uh, mini HDMI, which is uh, another pointless feature. I mean, who... I mean, I'm not... Maybe there is somebody who uses this, but I said this in my... Uh, review of the camcorder I'm using at the minute. It came with a, like a mini HDMI to HDMI. Well, who plugs a camera into the TV to, to play videos? I mean, nobody. It's, it's like incredibly 90s. The only reason we ever really did that back years ago was because the screens on the camcorders didn't exist. The camera screens, they didn't have them. So we used to plug them into the TV. I remember back in the 90s, uh, we had a Panasonic camcorder and it didn't have a screen on it. The only screen in it was on the viewfinder. So if you wanted to watch it with a group of people, you had to plug it into the TV. Um, and you know, it's it's like the biggest ninety. It's like the biggest ninety throwback of every camcorder is having this option to plug it into the TV, which I can't see why anybody would use it. But it's nice to have the cable, I suppose. And I don't know, maybe somebody uses it. So here's a power adapter. I haven't tested or not whether this thing uh, interferes with my car radio, <laughs> but I will check eventually. It'd be nice to see, I suppose, whether it does or it doesn't, but um, it looks, in my opinion, it looks exactly the same as the one that comes with the G1W. There's really no difference, to be honest. It's probably the same adapter, but hopefully this one doesn't give out the horrible interference. I think um, the reason it gives off the interference is it's to do with the wiring inside. It's actually a faulty adapter. Um, it shouldn't do that, but uh, yeah, so we'll um, we'll check and see if that makes any difference in my car and if it doesn't it might be something I just have to live with with these Chinese cameras but uh, I was willing to send it back and interfere uh, because of the interference because it seems to be something that some people complain about and others don't so uh, the chances are that it's a faulty adapter so we'll try that when I do the video on fitting it into my car and getting up and running and doing a test drive I haven't yet had time to do that I don't have my car today so um, that's the window mount which is exactly the same window mount as you get with the G1W uh, um, the same fitment. I'm not going to be using that in my car actually. I actually bought another adapter. Uh, it actually uh, fits to the um, uh, it fits to the stock of the rearview mirror, so it's much better because sometimes in the hot weather these things come off. Um, um, so yeah, I decided to buy it. It was only two pounds off of eBay, so uh, or I think it was uh, uh, three dollars or something like that. So if you want to buy one. Um, I'll put a link in the description. He doesn't usually ship to the UK, however, but uh, I messaged, messaged him and asked if he would, and he said yes. So, um, 
because I had good feedback. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's the that's the adapter, um, and that's a USB cable which we'll all never use, and probably because we have about ten billion of these uh, these mini, uh, if you can see, mini USB cables. I have about ten billion of them because everything had that connector at one point, but. Anyway, so uh, we'll never put, and it's much quicker to take the SD card out of the camera and put it directly into the PC. The, the, the file transfer is much quicker. Um, these cameras don't really, f uh, don't really w uh, offer very good speeds as a, um, as a card reader, so anyway. And here's the adapter with an interesting piece of paper, oh, the uh, manual should I say, with an interesting piece of paper. Let me show you this. Warm tips. <laughs> sounds like, uh, I don't know, sounds like the name of a porn movie or something, but let's read it. Okay, so it does say here, if it's, it's basically, I think what they mean is, um, is uh, frequently asked questions or frequently asked troubleshooting questions. Um, if it appears distorted uh, or dead or crash, this is pretty terrible English, but uh, you get the gist of it, I suppose. Uh, people go on about, oh, the English is so terrible in these things, but... Um, yeah, I know it's not great sometimes to have bad English on these things, but at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, it's, you can you understand what it's saying. So, um, so yeah, if it appears distorted or crash slash dead, or dead slash crash, mostly because the storage card doesn't match the machine. There are many shoddy storage cards on the market. The poor storage card can meet the mobile phone or computer read functions but couldn't meet the higher demand for photography and video. Okay, so what it's saying is uh, you probably want to um, you probably want to um, if it's not recording or you're getting recording errors and stuff you want to change your uh, memory card to a better one uh, basically. Um, and yeah I can imagine a lot of people are having problems with these cameras or any other kind of camera is down to poor quality memory or fake memory. There's a big problem online with companies selling you fake memory. And I, so much so as, generally I buy from wherever's cheapest with stuff, but uh, when it comes to memory, I only really ever buy from a, a website called mymemory.co.uk because I know 100% uh, that they only sell genuine memory products. So it's, I know it's a website I can trust and they're always very reasonably priced. So generally I tend to go there, mainly because you can't trust memory off eBay, it just it's just not worth trusting it. I've been stung many times for fake memory cards on there and I'm not willing to uh, um, I'm not willing to go through the, the hassle of trying to get your money back and stuff. It's just easier to go somewhere where they you know they sell genuine memory. So if you want somewhere that is sells genuine memory I'll put a link in the description. Um, so here it is, uh, onto the second bullet point. It says please use original authentic Kingston class ten storage card. Other brand card and class 4 cards does not recommended use to use uh, sorry I know I'm reading I'm, re I'm actually reading this off the viewfinder I probably shouldn't I can't really see it that well um, if you don't use the machine for a long time the internal battery will automatically burn hmm, that doesn't sound good please charge for more than 10 minutes when used please be kindly noted and it shows there a, uh, a 32 gigabyte class 10 uh, micro SD in case you didn't know what one looked like so, um, I think what the last bullet point means is that the battery will wear down uh, over time if you don't use it. So if you try and use it and you haven't used it for a long time and the battery's dead, don't be surprised. Um, the battery, uh, this thing still, uh, the battery, you know the main reason that happens is probably because the battery's poor quality, but anyway. Um, and yeah, what I find most interesting about this is uh, they do note the memory issues here. But the middle bullet point I found most interesting, which is what I want to share with you, and I was very surprised at this because it says, please use authentic Kingston Class 10 storage cards. Um, now, the reason I find that interesting is because um, when you are unboxing, uh, the, when I've been unboxing these cameras before, and uh, I've had a G1W, uh, and I've watched reviews on them, a lot of people have said, the G1W in particular is well noted for being very um, uh, very picky what memory cards it'll use and it doesn't like class 10 cards. In fact, uh, it's well known that if you put a class 10 card in the G1W it, it quite often will crash or the memory card doesn't, doesn't record properly or whatever. Um, 
and it's been well noted that that happens and that people tend to have more luck with a class 4 card or a class 6. Now, what I find interesting is in the G1W it's recommended you use a class 4, whereas in the G1WH they recommend you use a class 10 and that you use Kingston, which previously um, I think it was recommended that you use Transflash and that you use class, um, class 4 or 6, preferably 6. So that's what I had before. I had a class. I had an eight gigabyte. Uh, I had an eight gigabyte Kingston uh, class six card. Uh, but in this, I'll be using because they've recommended to use a class ten card. I'm not going to be using Kingston because I don't have a Kingston one. But I have this lying around, so I'm going to use this one instead. It. Uh, if you can't see that, it's a. Uh, if I get it in camera, it's a Lexar thirty two gigabyte. So let's have a quick look at the manual. This probably isn't going to be any different to the G1W. Uh, in fact, the picture is different. Uh, so it's a, it's the for the G1WH, but uh, let's see if the instructions are anything different. Okay, so it's mainly in Chinese so far, which is never good. It is if you're Chinese, but I'm not. So Oh yeah, and most interestingly enough, as we flick through, uh, as I suspected, the pictures um, for this thing are, um, of course, in... Uh, pictures of the G1W, not the G1WH, because that's obviously a G1W. Um, particularly because, as you can see, the buttons are different, and the button layout is slightly different um, too. So this is the Chinese portion, so it has Chinese. Let's flick through this, because I can't read Chinese. Um, yep, and it has an English part here, so uh, let's read that. If you can't read it on your video, you probably can't. Uh, this is a digital HD, high-definition video camera re recorder with the most advanced technology. This device is a common HD video camera, hmm, okay, uh, as well as a professional driving recorder. Hmm. It can, that's uh, that, that's questionable, but uh, it can record high resolution image with a pixel as high as 1920 by 1080 p full HD. The advanced wide dynamic technology and take pi the picture of three megapixels hmm. using TF card as the storage device. Compact size, low power consumption, HD camcorder, I'm just listing off features here, uh, can record more detailed perfect video image. Video also can be transferred by HDMI transmission wire directly to the high quality LED TV HDMI for high resolution displaying. <gasps> that, was a bloody, that was a bloody mouthful, I should have had a couple of full stops in there and maybe a comma somewhere. Um, enjoy true high definition lift by using this product. Okay, well that's interesting. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so it just gives you uh, a runoff of the features and stuff. It's basically exactly the same as the G1W, um, where I went over the manual, so I'm not really going to go over the manual too much in this. Um, it does say it's got, uh, oh, here we go, equipped with special auto suction cup holder, conveniently fix and use, built in GPS, traffic recording speed, driving track, optional. Okay, so uh, the it does say uh, GPS on the box, but it's clearly an optional feature. So there'll be a, a GPS model and a non-GPS model, but in my opinion, the GPS uh, model of these things is generally not very good. Um, so I've decided, and I find it a bit pointless, so I stayed away from those, because uh, they're really expensive as well. Okay, so yeah, how do I enter setting mode? Oh, it's all just stuff we've read before, and then it's all in Russian, and I don't speak Russian, so it's no good to me. Okay, so that's that. Well, time to get rid of the box. Time to open this thing. And, uh, well, let's see if I can put the memory card in this thing and see if I can use it. Like I said, this isn't a recommend memory card. It's a Lexar instead of a Kingston, but um, I don't think it will matter. I think providing if I format it correctly, it should work. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the camera to format it, so let's turn it on. Please insert SD card. I have inserted it. Okay. This isn't showing. This isn't going well so far. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't like that card, so I'm going to have to uh, experiment, see if I can get that to work. It may just want formatting properly in the uh, menu, so let's turn it back on. As you notice, it's the same uh, screen to turn it on and off as it was on the... Um, uh, as it was on the G1W, so the G1WH and G1W are essentially identical. So here is uh, the difference, as you probably see, it's a wide-angle lens and you get that kind of curving effect. If I just wave my finger in front of it, you'll see it 
kind of curves at the edges, almost looks like I'm pointing my finger inwards when I'm not. So that's the way that it works. Okay, so um, let's go through the menu settings now. So if you press, uh, well, let's go through the camera functions first of all. So if you press mode, it uh, switches to camera, as I said before, or playback mode, or back to video mode, which is fine. Uh, if you press uh, menu, it brings up the menu, uh, which is the video me menu. If you press it again, it brings you to the setup menu. If you press it again, it turns it off. So let's switch to the uh, camera mode. Same again, switches to the camera mode. Uh, if you press it once and if you press it twice, it switches to the uh, video or the uh, setup menu, which is fine, which is the date and stuff, which we'll set in a moment. Um, and uh, again, turns it off. Uh, and if you do it in the playback mode, it allows you to protect the video, delete, or turn it on slideshow, or again, go to setup. Um, doesn't matter which menu you go, which uh, section of the camera you go to the setup menu on, it'll generally be the same. Um, uh, so let's go back to the video mode, which is the most important one. Okay, so let's see what the settings are on this thing. As I said, that functions as the power on, power off. That functions as the record button and the OK button in the menus. And these uh, this uh, these buttons are to uh, up and down in the menus and also uh, to um, skip back and forward in the uh, uh, playback menu. So, Okay, so let's go to the... Uh, menu and have a look at the settings. So, uh, resolution, takes a little getting used to. It's already set to full HD, so we'll uh, we'll uh, leave it there. Full HD is where I want it. Loop recording, uh, it's set to uh, three minutes, uh, five minutes or ten minutes. Um, I'm going to set it to uh, five minutes. That's the way that I roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Uh, WDR, we're going to have that on, which is already on anyway. Exposure, we're going to leave as it is, which is zero. Motion detection, we're going to leave that off because uh, I don't really need it. But uh, it's a useful feature if you want to have the camera record who's walking past the car. So it would be useful if you wanted to record perhaps somebody damaging the car or whatever. Or perhaps it might be useful to leave on when you're in a car park in case somebody drives into you or whatever and drives off. You'll have some evidence of it then. Um, but uh, I'm going to leave it off for now because uh, I think it'll just run the battery down if it turns itself on every time there's motion detected. Uh, so we'll leave it off for now. Yep. Uh, record audio, we'll leave that on. Uh, you don't have to have the audio on when you're in the car. That's quite good if you don't want to record the random conversations and radio chat that's going on in the background. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not such a big deal anyway at recording that. If you don't want the chat there or whatever, you can always open it up in some editing software, the, vi the video of course, open it up in some vi editing software and uh, either just put an audio, another audio track over the, or the original audio or just mute the audio or something. Okay, so uh, here's another important feature of the uh, any car camera really it's the G sensor uh, what it does is it can sometimes uh, record videos if it detects uh, uh, abnormal g-forces so the idea is if you have a crash it'll automatically protect that video um, so that uh, it doesn't get deleted or overwritten um, uh, it's quite good if other people use your car for example and you want to know if they've been driving it over bumps too quickly or whatever uh, or if they've had a crash in it themselves and perhaps tried to cover it up quite interesting I suppose, not that anybody ever would but um, yeah it's a useful feature so if you select, oops I pressed the wrong button, <laughs> oh that's embarrassing, let's go back to where I was, <laughs> sorry about that, yeah uh, you can set it to high, medium and low, it's on medium by default so I think if you set it to high it, on the roads in the UK it's probably going to be triggering all the time because there's quite a lot of potholes out here, so um, yeah we'll leave it on medium. Okay so what about date stamp? Well we'll leave the date stamp on, date stamp is very important I think in uh, car cameras because it does it's kind of a, um, kind of proof that it happened when you said it happened. You know, the time and the, and the not just the place, because the place has been recording with the video, but um, more the uh, time and day that it happened. Uh, so I'm going to leave that on. That's a very important feature. And that's it. So if we just, uh, oops, let's go back to the video menu. So now let's go to the setup menu and see what's in there. Um, so we got date and time, which you can set. Okay, so now that I know the date, it's 2014. It's the fourth month. Okay, and it is the 24th today. On the date of filming, it's the 24th. Um, and what time is it? Oh, it's 5.37pm. So let's 
go all the way up to 17, 37. And 34 seconds, that'll do, doesn't matter. So I want to change that to the date, the month and the year, because that's the format we have our date here in the UK. And um, that's it. So that's the date set. Um, auto power off. Um, yeah, we'll have it power off in three minutes. It doesn't really matter. The beep sound, we'll leave that on. That's just the uh, sound that you can hear when I press the buttons. Uh, language is fine, because I don't speak any of the languages apart from English. So um, TV mode, PAL, fine. Hertz is fine. 50 hertz would be okay. Screen protection, I'll set that to three minutes um, so that the screen turns off after three minutes so it doesn't distract, so that's fine. Uh, the IR LED, I'm going to leave off um, because, well, it's a feature that nobody ever uses on these cameras. Um, uh, format, so you can format the SD card. No card. Okay, but uh, it doesn't want to accept my Lexar micro SD, so. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll work on that and see if I can get it to read it. Um, but yeah, there is uh, nothing I can do with that. So default settings, I'm guessing we'll return it to the default settings, uh, which I don't want to do. And the version of my camera is 2014-0108. So I'm not sure what that means, but uh, hey, there you go. That's my version. You can compare it to yours. Um, and that's that. That's everything for the features. Of the camera to be honest there's nothing much different here to the g1w um h uh g1 the regular g1w g1w h is very very similar in fact to the g1w as we uh, suspected so before i upload this i'm just in the middle of editing it in the minute i thought i'd try and get my uh, my my uh, micro SD working in this thing and um, when I plugged it into the PC it turns out the micro SD was formatted in NTFS I had previously been using it in a Windows tablet so it kind of makes sense that it was formatted in NTFS but um, yeah so all I did was I uh, plugged uh, this into my um, PC and formatted it and uh, in FAT32 plugged it into the ca uh, camera and the camera read it and then all I did was uh, I used the camera to um, uh, format it within the camera menu uh, so uh, it would work properly. Now I didn't have to format it again on the camera once I'd already formatted it on the PC but I figured it would probably be better to do it that way. Uh, these Chinese cameras are well known for being a little bit picky in uh, what formats they'll accept uh, of memory cards, what type of memory they'll accept, what brands, and uh, particularly what device is formatting the card. So um, it's uh, been noted by quite a few reviewers in the past that they have more uh, success formatting the micro SD in the camera before they start recording any videos on it. That way you kind of ensured success because the camera formats the card with the right cluster size and stuff for that the camera wants to be uh, using. So um, yeah, so all I did was formatted it with Windows and then formatted it in the camera and it's working perfect. It records uh, videos in the MOV format uh, very, very well. So I haven't yet tested it in my car but I will be probably this weekend at some point. I've got a, uh, if, the, if the weather holds up uh, tomorrow I may, uh, I may install this in my car and do a video of it. Also, if you're having problems with your uh, memory card in any camera, not just a, a car cam like this, but uh, you might want to try this tool here if I can zoom in and get it in focus. It's called the GUI Format Tool. You can probably see it there. And uh, Now the GUI Format Tool is great for uh, formatting um, camera cards in the right file system and the right cluster size so that the camera actually supports it. However, uh, I do recommend trying to, once you get the camera to recognise the card, then reformatting it in the camera itself to make sure that it's going to be compatible. Um, like I said, I haven't had a chance to use this Lexar memory card in the G1W yet, but uh, no doubt I will be having some time this weekend to go on a test drive and try it out and uh, just make sure that the uh, Lexar memory 
card gives the reliability I want it to give. Like I said, they didn't. The only cards they really recommended uh, was uh, Kingston memory cards. Um, however, I've seen a lot of people on Dashcam forums say Integral uh, cards are uh, had a very good track record with the uh, G1W and G1WH. Um, no one's ever really mentioned Lexar. They're not a very popular brand, but I have used them uh, in the past for other. Uh, other devices and I've not had any problems with them at all. They've always been very uh, very reliable. So yeah, um, I have to see how I get on with that. But I did get the card working. It does record uh, uh, perfectly in the MOV format. Um, so yeah. So that's that. That's the uh, review and my first impressions of the G1WH. Um, that's everything you get in the box. Um, and yeah, so what are my first impressions? Well, uh, first of all, I'm very pleased with it. It seems quite nicely built. Uh, it feels quite good. The build quality is pretty good, actually. It's nice and light, but it doesn't feel uh, light enough that, you know, it feels odd. Uh, it's it's a good sort of um, weight. It looks very inconspicuous in the window. And um, it has every function that the G1W has, apart from it's got, basically, a, a better lens. Um, and uh, other than that... Uh, this camera, however, is still picky about the memory options that you could use in it. Um, but other than that, yeah, my first impressions of it are very good, actually. Um, what I'll do is I'll fit this baby into my uh, car, I'll wire it into the fuse box, and then what I'll do is uh, I'll do a video of of, um, of my setup and my, um, my wiring into the fuse box and stuff of my car, and then I'll do some test footage of it and uh, perhaps a final opinion on it. Uh, compared to the G1W, but yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, if you bought the G1W and you want to know what the G1WH is like in comparison to it, uh, I can tell you 100% now, having had a G1W and used it for a few months, um, that the G1WH isn't that much of an improvement, it's basically uh, an improved case, it's a little bit thinner than the G1W, um, and it's a little bit less conspicuous, um, and it's got a slightly wider angle lens, but um, those are the only real pluses on the G1W. Uh, however, the wide-angle lens can also be a, a negative, a, uh, actually, because, to be honest with you, it does give that fisheye effect that, you know, like, sort of, if you um, if I put the camera here, you can see, like, it kind of curves round. So the field of view is curved rather than a straight line. Um, so it's very, yeah, it can... I suppose you could see that in a negative light, I, I can imagine. Uh, but yeah, so it does have a positive, uh, has quite a few positive aspects, and that one negative aspect to the uh, wide-angle lens, the positives being you can see a lot more, and it tends to, because it is curved, uh, a curved angle of view, it's kind of a side effect of that wide-angle lens, um, It most car windscreens are actually curved like that in some respect. Um, mine definitely is, and it does really suit it. It means you can really get a, a wide angle of everything that's going on on the road. You can see quite a lot in front of you. So it is quite a good option, but, uh, you know, if you've got a G1WH, it's not uh, a G1W, it's not worth... Um, it really isn't worth trading it in for a G1WH. It's basically the same camera with a different lens and in a slightly different case. Um, and, yeah, this this is very interesting, too, the... Uh, the warm tips that tells you to use a Kingston Class 10 card, where uh, most of the threads I've read on the dashcam forums have been to use a Class 4 in the G1W and to, to use Transflash rather than Kingston or uh, SanDisk. So, yeah, that's quite interesting. So that was my review and first impressions of it. Um, there'll be more videos to come on this camera. Um, as of yet, like I said, I haven't really had time to test this on the road. I'll get it set up in my car yet, but uh, uh, that... Uh, with the weekend approaching, I'm guessing I'll get that done and maybe get a couple of videos done on it too. So uh, thanks for watching guys.